Hey, I've been playing Matt for Refantasio, just a little JRPG from Atlas, the developers behind Persona and Shimogami Tensei. This had a lot of potential going in, and in 2024, a lot of things don't reach their full potential. But so far, Metaphor is living up to its legacy. Oh, big talk! I'm not finished it yet, but wow, this is definitely looking to be in the realms of Game of the Year material. I'm enjoying it. Looks like it's going to be about 80 to 100 hours long, and I'm enjoying it so much, I want to review it after completing it 100%. So I'm not quite finished with it yet, but I'm loving it so much, I want to give my current impressions and talk about this a bit. I'll cut you down! Almost sure, finished! Out. Let's stay calm. So, Metaphor Refantasio. Okay, here's the real basic bare bones intro to the story. A king has been murdered and the prince has been cursed to eternal sleep. It's quite dark, doesn't pull any punches, and feels like it's for older audiences. A big tournament is being held to help decide the next king, with contenders earning the people's favour. And earning that favour is a big part of the gameplay, with all your actions and decisions increasing your popularity rank. We're taking part in that tournament and we get to travel the world and go on this pretty epic adventure. Try not to die out there. I think what really pulls me in and holds my attention is the storytelling and characters. While it starts out quite story heavy and linear, you do get a lot more freedom a bit further into the game. Yeah, enjoying the story and characters, you find yourself in the middle of this political strife between religion and some of the larger factions. And I'm really enjoying it and I want to see it through. I am invested. What our country needs is power! Parts of this are going to feel familiar if you've played the Persona series. Slick turn-based combat where tactical gameplay like exploiting enemies' weaknesses gets you extra turns. But something new I really like is that as you level up, you don't have to enter turn-based combat for weaker enemies. You can just chop them up quickly and still get all the rewards. It's a huge time saver and it feels really satisfying progressing and chopping up monsters that gave you a hard time earlier on. You've got a limited amount of time and you'll decide how to spend it through increasing your personal skills or bonds with friends and followers. I'm currently trying to max out all my bonds. I'm a little worried that I'll fall short and run out of time before the game ends. So in the full review, I'll report back on how hard it is to max out all your followers. That's something that always stresses me a little with Persona games. You've got some anime cutscenes and over the top stylish menus and user interfaces. They could very easily just have been boring generic menus like a lot of other games. But Atlas really go the extra mile with the attention to detail and art design. Love it. And speaking of going the extra mile, consider subbing to Peter Bites or liking the video for more content like this. Hopefully the metaphor review after 100% will be finished next week, but you might like my Final Fantasy series where I'm replaying them all and ranking them against each other as I go. Thank you. Speaking of Final Fantasy, I do get a few Final Fantasy tactics vibes from metaphor. Like how you travel across the map and might bump into random events, but also the job system. So as you form bonds with friends and followers, you'll unlock more jobs and more advanced jobs. You can customise and swap jobs, and even mix and match abilities across jobs. So I do feel encouraged to try out and level up more jobs than I normally would. And some of the jobs are really cool, like I've just unlocked Dark Knight and I'm loving that. Monster designs are pretty rad and out there. Usually Atlas plays it safe with reusing monster designs in their other games, like the demons across Persona and Shimogami Tensei, but Metaphor is completely different, keeps it fresh. Like technically the graphics aren't super high fidelity, with some low polygon counts and weak textures, but the overall art direction is so strong, it allows Metaphor to stand amongst other 2024 releases visually. Music is pretty great too and stands out from a lot of other modern games with these crazy chants. Soundtrack is good, but I think Persona and Shimogami Tensei's music is a little bit more catchy. I'll report back once I've complete metaphor and heard everything it has to offer. I'm really enjoying it so far. Love starting out as a nobody and climbing the ranks of popularity. I forgot to mention how you can use magic to sword surf around in towns and cities. Pretty cool. It's all the little small things like that and attention to detail that's making this so much more enjoyable. I like a bit of system heavy stuff in my RPGs. Love the job system, and I love how increasing your bonds with followers and friends also gives you little perks. Like you might earn more experience points and be more resistant to something. That kind of stuff really scratches the niche for me. Can't wait to report back once I've completed 100% for a full-on review. Storytelling, characters, art direction, 
RPG systems and customization. Love it so far. Like I said, looks like a solid contender for Game of the Year so far. Hopefully I can max out all my followers in my first playthrough, but I think I'm going to have to delve into a second playthrough for some of the very specific achievements. I'll report back. Alright, peace for now.